Good morning, welcome to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, today, uh, we are um, we got the news this morning that Desmond Tutu had uh, passed away, Archbishop uh, Tutu. And so today's service is going to be a commemoration of him, a celebration of, of uh, his ministry, and we're going to be sharing a bit of uh, a sermon that he had preached once. Uh, to start, though, here is a, uh, we'll take a moment of quiet reflection as Shinny plays uh, a tune for us. And as uh, we, we reflect, I invite you to uh, open your hearts in prayer and worship. I'm going to start with a prayer that's attributed uh, to Desmond Tutu. It's adapted from an original prayer from Sir Francis Drake. Disturb us, O God, when we are well pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we dream too little, because we sail too close to the shore. Disturb us, O Lord, when the abundance of things we possess when, with the abundance of things we possess, we have lost our thirst for the water of life. When, having fallen in love with time, we have ceased to dream of eternity. And in our efforts to build a new earth, we have allowed our vision of heaven to grow dim. Stir us, O Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture into wider seas, where storms show thy mastery. We are losing sight of land, we shall find the stars. In the name of him who pushed back the horizons of our hopes and invited the brave to follow. Amen. Desmond Tutu was born in 1931. He's of mixed Kosa and Botswana heritage to a four, poor family in Kurtzlop, South Africa. He trained first as a teacher, married, had four children. At age 29, he became an Anglican priest, moved to uh, the UK to study theology, then returned to South Africa and took up some teaching positions. He, in 1975, he became the Dean of St. Mary's Cathedral in Johannesburg, and later Bishop of Lesotho and Archbishop of Cape Town. He was a proponent, uh, opponent of apartheid, stressed non-violent protest, and in 1984 was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. When Nelson Mandela was released from prison, uh, he first came and spent his time with uh, Desmond Tutu, and Mandela later put Tutu in uh, charge, put him in as the chair of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, in South Africa. Tutu spoke against a number of injustices, 
He was key to the introduction of women to the priesthood in South Africa, was a vocal supporter of LGBTQI rights, and continued critic of all government corruption. I'm going to play a little video that gives you a sense of his life. I had seen uh, one interviewer talk, uh, talking about Desmond Tutu, talked about the importance of the prophet Jeremiah in, in Tutu's life. Uh, Jeremiah was uh, a prophet, spoke against all the injustices of his time, but more of a reluctant prophet. Uh, and so as we hear from Jeremiah uh, chapter 1 verses 4 to 19, I want you to invite you to think of modern prophets of today. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord, God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today, I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms, to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well. For I am watching over my word to perform it. The word of the Lord came to me a second time, saying, What do you see? And I said to him, I see a boiling pot tilted away from the north. Then the Lord said to me, Out of the north disaster shall break on, out on all the inhabitants of the land. For now I am calling all the tribes of the kingdoms of the north, says the Lord. And they shall come, and all of them shall set their thrones at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem, against all its surrounding walls, and against all the cities of Judah. And I will utter my judgments against them, for all their wickedness in forsaken me. They have made offerings to other gods, and worship the works of their own hands. But you, Gird up your loins, stand up, and tell them everything that I command you. Do not break down before them, or I will break you before them. And I, for my part, have made you today a fortified city, an iron pillar and a bronze wall, against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its princes, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. The sermon I'm about to give today is from uh, Desmond Tutu. Uh, I picked this one uh, for a number of reasons. One, it's short. Uh, two, it was full of laughter, and three, it's full of protest. I believe it highlights the unique character of Tutu that displayed both joy and a passion for justice. Usually those of us who work and long for justice, we get worn down and embattled and bitter, cynical towards humanity and generally calloused and angry. But Tutu... Tutu showed that you can be both passionate about justice and filled with joy. In fact, in his fight for a joy, it was his fight for a joyful world that led to his activism 
and the scars from that activism in turn made him deeper and more hopeful. He was the living embodiment of what Paul says in Romans. He, Paul says that not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. This sermon I'm about to give is one that he preached to All Saints Church in Pasadena, California on November 6, in 2005. He has a connection with that church. He had spoken to them before. One of their ministers at the time, Reverend Wilma uh, Jacobson, was, he says, quote, the first woman I had ordained to the priesthood, and a little later I appointed her to be my chaplain, making her the first woman to be a chaplain to an archbishop. The first half of his sermon is all filled with fun. He's making jokes and laughing and getting them to laugh. He praises the church for their support in the fight against apartheid. He gets them to give each other a big round of applause. He talks about how we are all one family. And that's where I'm going to pick up the sermon. These are now his words. Quite frankly, I think we tend to say, our Father, addressing our father, God as our Father, oh, well, that's nice. That makes us a little sentimental. But in my decrepitude of 74 years now, I reckon the words that Jesus said to Mary Magdalene are some of his most critical words, if not, if not his most radical. For in that, Jesus is saying, hey, you know something? You are family. You are the human family, God's family. You and I, knowing ourselves to be the awful sinners that we are, are given the incredible privilege of addressing God, the all-holy God, the omnipotent God, the God who dwells in light unapproachable, from whom the angels and archangels veil their sight. They can't bear to see the glory of God as they worship and adore God ceaselessly, crying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. And you and I, are able to say to this one, Abba, Abba. We are meant to have the intimacy of a little child. This family has no outsiders. Everyone is an insider. When Jesus said, I, if I am lifted up, will draw, did he say he draw only some? The old draw some and tough luck to the others? He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all. All, all, all. Black, white, yellow, rich, poor, clever, not so clever, beautiful, not so beautiful. All, all. It is radical. All. Saddam Hussein, Osama bin Laden, Bush, all, all. All are to be held in this incredible embrace. Gay, lesbian, so-called straight, all, all. All are to be held in this incredible embrace of the love that won't let us go. Isn't it desperately sad that at a time when we face formidable problems, poverty, HIV, AIDS, conflict, that the Anglican Communion can invest so much energy on disagreements about human sexuality. A communion that used to boast that one of its distinctive characteristics was something called comprehensiveness. That our communion, the Anglican Church, included just about everybody. Even if you had the most weird theology, you could come in and you were welcomed. And now we, who used to be held in admiration by many because of this inclusiveness, are now spending time working out how we can excommunicate one another. God looks on and God weeps. God weeps. But we are family. You know that in families, you don't get to choose who's going to be your relative. How frequently we wish we could choose. But in family, we are God's gift to one another. We are God's gift, all of us, to one another. In family, there's an ethic of family, from each according to their ability to each according to their need. We, we don't say, hey baby, what have you contributed to the budget of this house? 
Baby has contributed precious little, sometimes perhaps a strange smell, often waking you up in the middle of the night. But into this bundle you pour all of your love in a healthy family. You don't say, oh sorry, you're going to get in proportion to what you contribute. If that is so, how in the name of everything that is good can we continue to sp spending obscene amounts on what we call defense budgets? Are we really, which are really budgets of death and destruction? When we know that just a minute fraction of those budgets would ensure that all our brothers and sisters would have enough clean water to drink, would have enough food to eat. One billion people go to bed without food and we can't feed them. We can't ensure that everyone has affordable, adequate health care, that they can have a good education, that they can have a decent home. And God looks on and God weeps. God weeps. And God says, what, what in the name of everything that is good ever got into me to create that lot? But then God looks, and God sees All Saints Church, or St. Andrew's Presbyterian. And God sees family. Did you notice? A smile breaks over the face of God. And the little angel goes up and wipes the tear from God's eye. God says, hey, have you seen them? Just look at how they are carrying out those ministries of caring. They have vindicated me. Yes, I meant for them to be compassionate and caring. I meant for them to be gentle and sharing. I meant for them to wipe the tears from others. Yes, they have justified me, says God. And God smiles. All of you here are saying, yes, God has meant that this world should be a better world. It ought to be a world where we live admirably together, where, a world where there is greater joy, where there is more laughter, more caring, more sharing. And God says, hey, aren't they neat? And God smiles. This is where Tutu's sermon ends. I feel like we're missing a paragraph to it. But it did, in fact, end abruptly. He told them to be loving, and then he stabbed them deeply in their conscience, and then he said how much God loved them. When I think about it, I like this abruptness. It fits very well with the Old Testament prophets. He's left them still with that lingering feeling of guilt and the call to do more, but at the same time reminds them of the God of justice through whom they will do that work. They are doing it. We are doing it right now. God is doing it right now. And I believe this is where Tutu's mix of joy and justice comes from. It's an ever-present knowledge that God who calls us to justice also gives us the power to bring about this justice. God is part of the work. God is the work. God is all around us as we renounce evil and embrace peace. We have our roles to play, and God will empower us to do it. And we're not just going to make ourselves into the family of God by sheer force of will. That, that's impossible. But instead, God is the one that creates us into a family. This is God's work. So, in that, I can suffer for it and rejoice in it. This is the message of Desmond Tutu, I believe. It's the life he exemplified, and one, I hope, inspires us all. Let's hear now a few words from him directly. Let us turn, oh, uh, we'll turn now to our prayers of the people. Uh, and a prayer for all of us, I think, that uh, for all of us who search for reconciliation and peace in our lives, uh, for all places of uh, injustice, 
If you have other comments, you can type them, but unfortunately comments are not showing up on my, my screen at the moment. So I might not be able to see them if you're watching on Facebook, uh, but you will see it for each other and hopefully pray for each other. Uh, prayer for uh, all those living with cancer. We've had a request, uh, especially uh, someone named Holly. Are there other prayer requests today? I think for the cold. Oh, for drivers, I do see comments. Thank you, Heather. Um, people on the road, that they drive slowly and safely, especially around tow trucks. That's great. Lord God, we give thanks for all those people in our lives in the world today who inspire us to bring about more love and compassion and justice in this world. We give thanks for your prophets, many of whom are in this church and in our own lives, who call out uncomfortable truths but help to change the world. We pray that you give us that boldness and strength to be able to speak in love uh, against the injustices we face. And we pray that you will fill our hearts also with the bravery to be forgiving, to be compassionate, and to be reconciled. We pray today for all places in the world where there is conflict and injustice. For countries, including our own, who have not stood up to care for their people uh, sufficiently. We pray for Canada as we work to build uh, bridges of reconciliation with Indigenous communities. We pray for your church as we play our role in bringing about more healing in this world. We pray today for all of those who are out in the cold, that they may find warmth and shelter. We pray for all of those who are sick, uh, especially those living with cancer. We remember Holly. We pray for everyone on the road, that they will drive safely, that you keep those who are out in the cold uh, working, like tow truck drivers, that you will keep them safe too. And on this Boxing Day, we give thanks for your message of peace and your promise of justice that has come through your Son, Jesus Christ. May that hope and joy continue to live in all of our hearts. Amen. Uh, we don't have an offering plate going around, but I want to take it off um, the moment to thank all of you. Give praise to God for all of you who continue to give of ourselves to the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ. Whether that's by donating to the church or the ways in which you live out your lives. Uh, through all those things. The church is blessed and the world has been blessed. We'll take a moment to sit in some quiet reflection while we listen to Shimi.
Go now in the, with the hope of God, filling your hearts with both a call for justice and a love of joy. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us online, and I wish you Merry Christmas.